Hello everybody, it's Captain Dorja here, and this is Captain Dorja's Armory, and this is the E-100. Now, I'm always talking about how you can never have enough big guns, and this is one of the largest guns that I have. Um, and, uh, so we're going to take a look at this today. Whoa, holy crap. My second loader finally hit 100% repair. Firefighting. This thing catches on fire a lot. So, yeah. Alright, now that that's taken care of, E100. Uh, a couple of things about the E100. Uh, this tank is not the best tier 10 heavy, but in its element, it's incredibly strong. Uh, the E100 is pretty typical of German heavy tanks. It's an armor tank. Like, and by that I mean that it's a tank that very much lives or dies by how effectively its armor performs. Not not the fact that it tanks with armor. Obviously it tanks with armor. This is World of Tanks. But um, typical of the German heavy tanks, the E100 very much literally lives and dies by how well its armor is employed. And uh, if you look at it, it is very well armored. 200 on the front. 130 on the sides of the hull and 150 on the rear and the turret is 250 on the front and 150 on the sides and rear and the mantlet is very thick the problems with the E100's armor is that even though it's well sloped it's all flat so even though this turret front is 250 millimeters thick powerful guns on tier 10s and tier 9s can shoot through it uh, so Angling is crucial in the E100, and also it's got the massive German lower plate and the front-mounted transmission, so it is prone to being set on fire from frontal penetrating hits, which is really annoying. Um, the other main feature of the E100 is this humongous gun that it has, uh, the 15 centimeter KWK44 L38, which if you take a look at it, you can see that it has fairly bad penetration for a tier 10 gun. It's got a horrible rate of fire of only 3 rounds per minute, appalling accuracy of 0.4, a long aim time, but it does 750 average damage, so if you can manage to pen, you can really hurt things. Now, because of that really crappy penetration, uh, it's a good idea in the E100 to carry a varied ammo load. Luckily, the E100 can carry a ton of shells because you're going to need them because you need to change ammo types all the time. Now, I keep five high explosive rounds, 15 premium shells, and 30 armor piercing shells. The high explosive rounds I have in case I want a guaranteed cap reset, I also have them if I find an arty and I want a guaranteed one shot on that arty. Or if there's an enemy tank that's down below about 200 health, where I might have trouble penetrating it, and I want to insta-kill it. Or I just want to make sure I don't get trolled and have something like a, like a tier 8 French tank with no armor have a tracking shot stop my giant shell. So that's what I keep the HE around for. Uh, I have the AP for normal targets basically tier 8s and 9s and lightly armored tier 10s, or if I'm just in like a favorable circumstance and I can just, you know, use the AP rounds. And the premium heat rounds I have for other tier 10s, because this thing has trouble with them. Uh, point of interest, heat rounds don't get a normalization, normalization roll. So sloped armor, you still have to aim with this gun using premium rounds. But uh, the good thing about heat rounds is that they don't their penetration doesn't diminish with range, and they have a very strong penetration of 334. So uh, the E100 is I don't drive it that often because uh, generally tier 10 matches, uh, you know, you're you're fighting six or seven other tier 10s a lot of the time and. You, know, you got two GW Type E's per team, and a Batshad artillery, and you know whatever. Uh, it's it tends to not be that fun. Plus, uh, the E100, since it's not very mobile, and since it's very situational, and since that it's 
the way its gun works. If you're on a crappy team with an E100, it's really hard to carry them. And I'm not the all-star of World of Tanks, but I probably win half my games by carrying my team. So, the E100, it's really hard to carry in. But anyway, I've talked enough in the garage. We want to see big guns in action, so let's take a look at this replay. So, here we are in the E100. It's uh, not a standard battle. This is an encounter battle on Muravanka. Now, I've mentioned a little bit that the E100 is very good situationally, but when it's out of its element, it's usually not very, not a very strong tank. And this map is not really the element of the E100. It's pretty open. Uh, the E100 likes closed spaces where you can make sure the enemy is going to attack you from the front so that you can angle your armor and just tank a lot of damage. So, the map, not ideal. But the matchmaker is actually pretty good. There's only two tier 10s on the enemy team. One's another E100, and E100s don't really have any problems dealing with each other. Uh, the other one, though, is the FV215B183 Tier 10 British Tank Destroyer, which you will see me refer to in chat as the Heshmobile. Now, those things are just insanely broken uh, with the high explosive squash head ammo, the premium rounds for that thing. There's nothing in the game that it needs to aim at, and they do 1850 average damage. So, I'm worried about the Heshmobile. But aside from him, the matchmaker is pretty favorable. There's only a few tier 9s, and there's a lot of tier 8s that I can really pick on, where my low penetration gun isn't going to be that big of a factor, and where I will be able to rely on my armor. And uh, even though there are four artillery, as long as I can get good cover behind this hill, I should be alright. And besides, normally I run into so many tier 8 artillery when I drive this, that it's a breath of fresh air to run into 4 arty and have them be 2 tier 7s and 2 tier 6s. Now you can see up ahead of me that Type 59 and T69 each just lost half of their health, and that was from one shot of the GW Tiger. So even though I just said the arty in this match isn't really that big of a deal, it's obviously still worth paying attention to. One shell just halved both of their health. So, yeah. The arty is still very dangerous, but I'm not worried about it too much. Well, that's not true. I'm worried about it, but what I'm most worried about is that Chinese medium tank. If he gets up into the B2 sector of the map, where he can just spot us, we could be in a world of hurt. Now, I've got the T110 with me, and I just got spotted, so I type in chat, spotted, to let the T110 know that something is observing us. And sure enough... There's the WZ-120. So I ping the map, attention to B1, and I'm trying to call down Artie on that guy. I also see if I can take a shot at him, but with this gun at that range and a target that small, I've got no chance. Now, what I don't want to have happen is I don't want to have that WZ-120 just pin me down so that their Artie can rain on me. And I know where the enemy E100 is. I only see tier 8s up here. So I'm going to go and attack. Now that WZ gives us an opportunity. I fire at him, but it was kind of a snapshot. And this gun's not accurate at all, so it missed. That IS-3 tries to pen my turret, and he fails. And my return shot does not fail the pen. The IS-3 is hard to penetrate with a tier 8, but a new 100 doesn't have any problems. And you can see the way I'm trying to angle my tank and my turret. With the E-100, you need to make sure you're not just pointing your turret straight at the enemy all the time. Because if I keep my turret pointed at those enemies, that M-103 will just shoot right straight through the front of my turret. So you'll notice that I'll look at the enemy, and then I'll suddenly traverse my turret away. And you can see right there, the M-103 just bounced. If I hadn't swiveled my turret, that shell would not have bounced. There we go. I put another big one into the T-32. The tier rates with this M-103 are beginning to really feel the pressure. The M-103 just bounced one exactly off my gun mantlet. He is either really overconfident or he's firing premium shells. Because it is not a good idea to fire straight at an E-100 gun mantlet. Unless you're firing very, very high penetration premium rounds, which will go through with ease. 
So again, worried about that WZ120, but our Artie is on him, and the guys with me are paying attention to him. So I'm pushing up here. I want to shoot the M103, and he gives me a chance, but I'm not fast enough. I aim for his lower plate, and I miss, and he detracks me. So, wait for my track to repair, back up into Artie cover. Right now, my target, I want either to shoot the IS-8 or the M103, because... But I'm having gun depression problems right here. Amazingly, that shot actually penned that M103's turret. I couldn't believe it. You can see right here I'm loading an HE round. That IS-3 is on 123 health. And I fired one AP round at him already when he was on low health like that. And it only managed to blow his track off. So I want to make sure I get the kill. So I know that my HE round will easily do 123 damage to him. So I load an HE round and finish off the IS-3. At this point, I go back to AP to try and shoot this WZ-120. But there's not enough of a target. It's not worth me firing at him. Now, most of our backup is dead. Our friendly IS-3 is dead. Our T-69 is dead. We've lost the T-34. The T-110E5 is dead. This T-34 is getting hit. But you can see our Artie right there is doing good work. Now, I want to zoom in real quick for a shot I take that was probably pretty stupid. I was hoping I might be able to penetrate his cupola, but you can see right there that it missed. So, I'm loading another AP round. I want to try and fire at the IS-8. Still worried about this WZ-121, but... Chinese tanks have horrible gun depression, and in order for him to get his gun down far enough to hit me, he'll have to expose himself incredibly. You can see right there, I had a gun depression problem, and the IS-8 is able to put a pretty solid hit into me. IS-8's got a really good gun, plus he was able to hit my lower plate. But... I can do the same thing too. So we just put 1100 damage into that IS-8. I see him loading HE right here to go for the IS-8 kill. Again, he's only at 59 health. I just want to make sure to secure the kill. Now look, that's where the IS-8 hit me. That's really, that's pretty much guaranteed penetration on the E-100 when you have a high caliber gun. Now the T-34 is able to get the IS-8 kill because I ran over a broken fence with a 130 ton tank with a 1200 horsepower engine and it brought me to a full stop. Look at that, are you kidding me? I thought physics was in play. What happened to physics of a 130 ton vehicle moving at 30 kilometers per hour hitting a stone wall? Alright, whatever. Right, so I've still got HE loaded because I'm going I'm going already hunting. That M4043, I don't care how much health he has, I'm not gonna allow him to survive more than one hit. If I load AP, I might only do a tracking shot. I might get a freak clipping shot that somehow bounces. So I'm keeping HE loaded to make sure I kill the M4043. Now I don't want to go all the way up into A0 because that'll take quite a bit of time. And even though our team's winning, we are actually under quite a bit of pressure right here. They still have a very dangerous tank destroyer. And considering my friendly tanks are just tier 8 premiums, a KV-4 and a T-34 is quite dangerous. Uh, the KV-4 just went down. I just spotted the RE. And the enemy FV-215B-183 has killed one of our RE. I polish off the M4043. Now it's time for me to go hunt the Heshmobile. There he is. And uh, I'm going to have to break this battle into two segments because it's looking like it's going to be over 10 minutes long. So I'm going to pause right here and break the battle. Right, so now that that annoying formality is taken care of, let's get back to the Heshmobile hunt. There he is. He's spotted. The T-34 is moving in. I'm moving in. I want to be careful with this with this guy because he can do 1,800 damage. I take a shot at him right there. It wasn't a very good shot, and it missed. He's at full health. I still have 2,200 health, but that just means he can two-shot me with a hit basically anywhere on my vehicle. 
and uh, we have just lost our artillery. So right here, you can see that I've loaded a premium shell. I just don't want to risk losing the match to a freak bounce. I don't know the armor of the 215B series very well. I don't know their weak points very well. So I'm loading a premium shell to to help secure the kill. And you can see right there that I'm rewarded with an 888 damage hit. And I have not been spotted yet. Now I've been spotted. So the Heshmobile knows where I am and that is dangerous. But I'm not even reloaded yet and it's going to take two shots to kill him. Now, I just want to pause for a second. He just did 547 damage to me by shooting an HE shell straight into my gun mantlet. That is the thickest armor on one of the most heavily arm armored vehicles in World of Tanks. He shot an HE shell at it and did 547 damage. Yeah. Balance. Right. Anyway, let's continue. I'm loading a third premium shell to make sure I kill this guy. But the T-34 ninja's the kill. And since the enemy only has a T-34 left, even with the... Even with the E-100's, you know, hit-or-miss gun, there's no reason to keep a premium shell loaded. Those things cost 48,000 or 4,800 credits apiece. I'd like to make a profit on this game, so I go back to standard AP. And T-34 is easy meat for an E-100, and even with 1,100 hit points, I'm not worried. Especially since he just got shot down to 735, and my gun does an average of 730 damage. And here we go, attacking from the side, wait for the shot, and boom. Game over. That was a pretty good match. So the E-100... Slightly out of its element, but with a good matchmaker to make up for it, and a reasonably competent team, I didn't have to carry the team, which is good, but as you'll see in a second, I still did my, my fair share of the work. So the post-battle results screen here, uh, you can see that was quite a successful match for me with this 5 times experience special on. I was able to get 8,540 experience for my first victory of the day. 72,406 credits and a steel wall medal. Uh, one thing I will say about the E100 is money-wise in this thing, you either go big or you go home. You either get, you know, 60, 70, 80,000 credits with a 50,000 credit profit, or you get 20,000 credits with a 30,000 credit repair bill, a 25,000 credit ammo bill, and 9,000 in consumables and end up losing 40,000. So this thing, you either make a ton of money or you lose it all. It's like it's like going to Las Vegas. So you can see here I did, did a lot of damage to a lot of different tanks, and I got, managed to get some detection credit for uh, these three, three kills. Right here you can see 1,139 unmodified experience, which is quite a bit higher than our T-34, who came in second with 870. Uh, 15, or T-34 did pretty good, so did the other T-34, uh, 1,600 damage apiece. You can see this Artie was really doing work here, almost 2,000 damage, compared to our, uh, <clears throat> our, uh, M4043 right here, only did 600, which is, he must, he got two kills and he only did 600 damage. That is a guy who doesn't know how to play Artie. These guys, doing, you know, 5,000 damage put together, those guys know what they're doing. They know how to drive an RV. Um, I managed to do 5,233 damage. That's pretty good. Even with a 750 average damage gun, that's quite a bit. Uh, you can see 14 shots fired, 11 hits, 10 penetrations. Um, of those, I had two HE shots that only did about 150 to 200 damage a piece and I had some very low damage rolls on a couple of tanks I hit the M103 for like 
550, which is pretty low for the E100. And uh, the T32, I think I also only did about 500 to him. So 5,233 ever damage out of 10 shots. It's actually about, it's only about 66% of the average damage output for 10 penetrating hits. So you can see that even though I did a lot of damage, I actually didn't do hardly any in terms of the damage potential of the E100. Now, I do have a premium account, so 72,000 credits. 12k for repair, which is a lot since I only lost half my health and the only critical damage I took was tracks and a radio operator. Uh, 13,720 for ammo. Uh, more than half of that is for the two premium shells I fired. Those are 4,800 credits apiece. But still allowed me to bring in a profit of four th or 46,280, which is quite substantial. And you can see here... 8,540 experience and 420 free experience. So that was a very good match. Uh, that's the most fun I've had in my U100 in quite a while. I don't drive it that often. Honestly, I probably only play th three or four battles a month in it. Um, I go on kicks where I'll drive it a lot, and then I'll go on kicks where I don't drive it at all. Because it's, it's just so hit or miss. If you get a map like Ensk, it's dominant. If you get a map like this, half the time you drive two sectors out of your spawn, get spotted by a T-50-2, and then take three GW Type E shells through the turret and die and lose 50,000 credits. So yeah. Anyway, that was a good match. None of that crazy stuff happened in here, and I got to blow people up. So yeah, the U-100, it's still pretty cool. I, I still like it. And that's, that's going to be all for now, so Captain Dorjo with Captain Dorjo's Armory, and just remember, you can never have enough big guns.